Inside the Intervals, episode 6. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Back with your host, Chris B. So, in today's podcast, I've actually got a few topics that I've been wanting to talk about for the last couple of weeks, but I said, you know what? This is more of a thing that can be just more towards the end of the year. And I think it's been a long overdue uh, thing that's happened in the NBA. So, let's get straight into this one. So, yeah. Carmelo Anthony is officially back in the NBA. Now, as you are aware, Carmelo Anthony, the last team he was playing on was the Houston Rockets. And that was, um, I think it was sometime early last season. He was pretty much cut from the team and it caused him a lot of problems for other NBA teams to actually get him onto a roster. Now, of course, as a player, it's frustrating, you know, especially when you have so much left in the tank that teams are not taking you on. And I think, you know, for someone of that, you know, of Carmelo's capability is that <clears throat> you're able to, you know, he's still able to perform. He's definitely still able to perform. Of course, he's going to lack in some areas because of his age. And, you know, when you age, of course, you know, we're talking about, you know, stamina, you know, your willpower, skill. Of course, that will, of course, that will start to um, affect affects you as a player because of your age and whatnot. It's just how things work in the NBA and in sports in general. But um, yeah, Carmelo, he has proved time and time again that he is ready to be in this league. Now, there was a lot of controversy around it. And I think a lot of teams were kind of really worried about him being on the teams. But my issue is that, my issues with some of the teams is that, you know, just because one team didn't want him, doesn't mean that the rest of the league kind of had to kind of boycott him. And I think that was one of the reasons why he kind of, you know, was really frustrated and upset. And, you know, and he even said himself he was ready to retire. So imagine if Carmelo retired and, and that would have been something even more. I mean, he would have went down as a, definitely someone as a Hall of Famer. But um, I think the main goal that Carmelo wants is a ring. That's the most important thing. And um, of course, you know, everybody has been rooting for Carmelo Anthony to get a ring, to try and um, win a championship with whatever team. I'm sure people wanted it with the Knicks. It didn't work out. OKC, it didn't work out. The Houston Rockets, it didn't work out. So now he's on the Portland Trailblazers, which I think is a good fit for them. You know, I think, see, they, they definitely need someone to help out on the scoring load. So it takes pressure off um, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. So, Melo, Carmelo is definitely a good fit. He definitely seems like he is. He seems like he's, you know, he's performing the way he was before and, you know, averaging a good amount of points and rebounds. And, and you know, he doesn't have to do as much as he would normally do because he has players around him who are capable of scoring night in and night out. So, you know, I just hope uh, Carmelo definitely sticks with his team for the long run and or for how many years he's got left. And hopefully you know, he can definitely be an impact to bring Portland home, maybe even a championship. It seemed far it does seem far stretch um very far stretched, but uh Carmelo is definitely one of those guys who, you know, where however he comes off, if that's if he comes off the bench, if he starts, he is going to perform and give you something. Now um I know there have there have been issues with a lot of people saying that oh should he start should he, um, why should some people are saying, why should he come off the bench? And I'm thinking, well, look, he's accepted his role. And I think as a basketball player, you want to definitely accept your role. Now, Melo has had it tough over the last few years, and that is clear to see. So him, by him not starting, it doesn't add any more pressure onto it. He can just, he can go through the season and just do what he needs to do and just help the team. And then when it matters most, you'll see improvements, you'll see differences in the team's game and in the team's structure and how it all works out. Now, I wouldn't look at Poland to have to, I wouldn't look at Poland and, and say, oh, that's a big three straight away. But, you know, they do have some, they do have someone who is capable, like a long term vet like Kamala Anthony, he is capable. Um, my issue, I think, with, um, I think, well, not even so much my issue, but I think a lot of people had an issue with Melo in terms of, um, I, um, I know Chauncey Billups, Chauncey Billups um, 
former NBA player, championship with the Detroit Pistons. Of course, he said a few things about Melo, about all he cared about was the double-doubles. He was a great player, great teammate, but he all he cared about was getting double-doubles, his own stats. And I think, yeah, well, of course, that's going to affect the team. That's going to affect the team every every step of the way to try and bring a championship home. So now, Carmelo needs to look at it like this. Well, my points, yeah, I may have got a double-double this night, but we didn't win the game. If you won the game and you had the stats, then fine, so be it. And you know they seem to be doing really well with him as well. I think um I think it's been the last eight games he's been it's been four for four. Every time he's been on, I and mean, then without him, it's been like five for nine. So you can definitely see improvements there. And I think the team is ready to actually push. Uh, team is ready to push on with him. They're definitely ready to push on with him. I can't. I mean, you know, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. I think they can somewhat rest on the offensive end now. Because they have someone who is very capable of, you know, shooting the three, mid-range, attacking the basket, very tough as well. You know, Carmelo is very grit and grind, loves to get rebounds, offensive and defensive. Um, of course, on defense, I would say, I wouldn't say Melo has got bad defense, but I would like to see some improvements, you know. He is, he's one of those guys, he's one of those key guys that... Um, that doesn't really pride himself on defense as much, but he is capable when it matters the most, and you know he's definitely someone who is who is definitely he's a spark plug for that team. He definitely is, and I and I couldn't see him anywhere else. I mean, there were rumors about him going to the Lakers or maybe even going to the Nets, and I think mm, yeah, I, I guess I guess so, but I don't think it wouldn't have been a better fit. I think him on the Portland right now is a good fit. Despite um, Portland's record right now, I think it's a much better fit and it's worth it. So, what we need to do now is just see how Melo plays out for the rest of the season. And of course, the team's improvement as well because it's all about them. I'm sure they got new players as well. They definitely got whole Hassan Whiteside. So, they do have capable guys who are ready to come on the court and just and just perform and night in now. So it's just one of those things that, um, yeah, Melo, it's been long awaited. I'm sure everybody's been waiting for Melo to come on the league. Some people saying, yeah, he's washed up. He deserves, he doesn't deserve to come back and whatnot. But this is someone who has dedicated his long longevity with the game. He's de he's dedicated his life to this game and he has performed, he has improved. This is the same guy who scored... Uh, 50 huge points in the Olympic Games back in 2012, you know, it's still the same guy. So I think everybody needs to, you know, stop holding so much pressure and just let him relax, let him adjust to the team, let him work out the system. Then he will be a, a top, well, not so much a top tier, but he'll be somewhat who is ready. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I know people talk about LeBron and he, in LeBron's pretty much going to be 35 soon and Everybody talks about him and how he's conditioned himself well. Well, you know, him, well, Melo and LeBron are two different players. But, you know, it's good to see them both in the league st still doing what they need to do. So, I think, you know, we just have to wait until this how this season plays out for the rest of the team and for Melo as well. Um, I'm actually excited to see what, what he can do. I've seen quite a few games of him actually just, um, you know, doing what he normally does. So, he's definitely improved he's definitely waited long enough now and he's ready for action so you know and there was so many comments about this as well i even saw one person say something about you know guys like um uh what's it what's his name again i think it's a uh, uh gerald dudley Ger gerald dudley and uh, people weren't happy that he some people were saying like oh how comes he's in the league but Melo isn't and sort of thing and it's not about that it's about being on the team it's about fitting in the system and Gerard Dudley understands that that's why he's in the league still because he understands team systems he's he's a veteran you know when you when you are big when you're a veteran you understand that this is what you need to do this is your role regardless if you're coming off the bench or if you're starting this is your role and this is what you need to do. And Jared Dudley understands that. And I think for Melo, it took him a long time to understand that. It took him a long time to understand that because I think he's always been in that position to, well, I'm the main guy, so this is how it has to work through me. So now he doesn't have to worry about that as much. You know, if, if CJ and, and Dame are not having great games, they can look at Melo. If Melo's not having a great game, CJ, Dame, of course, there's Sam Whiteside there who's a pain protector. Then you've got yourself a team there. So, you know, Portland right now, yeah, they, they, I think they are struggling as well a bit. You know, they are in the bottom half of the league, bottom, in the conference right now of the West. 
But, you know, it's still early in the season. It's coming up to Christmas. So they, they've got time to change things. I'm, I'm, I'm sure when it hits February, that's when they're going to they're gonna have to start to panic if things do stay the same. But yeah, it's just great to see Melo back. Basketball's been very good this year and a few games. And hopefully I can touch on a few more topics as well in, in another podcast at a later time. Okay, so the next topic I wanted to talk about is that um, the NBA... There's um there's been quite a few things they want to do. They they have they basically been in meetings and they want they've been talking about adjusting, you know, games. Now, obviously, as you know, the NBA is an 82, 82 game season long. That's how much, that's how long the season is. It's eighty two games. Now, we all love it, even though it is long and you know it, it, it can drag sometimes. But and there's so many games in a day or in a week or whatsoever. Still. All basketball fans love it. Now, the NBA have been um, they have been questioning about reducing the games, which is understandable because it is a long season, and I get that for the most part. But the, how much? But how much they're willing to cancel the games by? It just doesn't make any sense. So they've gone from eighty-two games to seventy-eight games, which doesn't make any sense. The number of games have got to be significant. So I'm talking maybe even between let's say what ten to twenty games at least, at least. If, if it was something, if it was a sixty-two game season, understandable. But if it's four games, that doesn't make any sense at all. And I think it's kind of um, unfair for let's say like rookies who are coming into the league now and sophomore guys and coming up to guy and guys who are just entering their primes. You know, it's going to be hard on them to. Um, try and reach some of the all-time scoring lists or rebound list assist list you know all types of stats it's going to affect stats in a huge way my thing is that if they if you're gonna if you're gonna cancel this so if you're gonna shorten the games shorten it by at least 20 games because cancelling it by four it just doesn't make any sense and i think a lot of people will be like well what's the point of that and I think I think they've spoken about this before, and they might put it into action sometime in the near future. And um, kind of kind of integrating with that as well, they're even talking about um, you know they're talking about mix crossing the conferences in the playoffs now. So let's say for example, <coughs> excuse me, the first seed of the West versus the eighth seed of the East. So they they're talking about um, you know. Uh, conferences crossing over in the playoffs now and I think um, to me that is kind of interesting because I can see why they're doing it they're looking at it in a, in a perspective that the Eastern Conference right now is um, is weakened in the West very weakened in the West and it's been like that for a long while so they're trying to make it a bit more competitive for Eastern Conference teams to actually get a chance to get a championship and whatnot. now I understand that completely and I'm kind of for it it's just it has to be a certain way it's done so you know it can't so if it's done like where it's the first seed versus the eighth seed of the east and and the west it's just like well yeah okay i can understand that but then again you know they're talking about you know um kind of like mixing it all about all together and i'm just thinking no like let's keep it the way it's always been you know first versus eight second versus um second versus seventh third versus six and fourth versus fifth that's how it's always been and i think um to keep that format that would be good and um i i just don't think i'm changing i just don't think you know you know mixing the conferences you know and then changing the format of how of how um the games are how the teams are going to be set out it's just not it's not really going to be ideal but i do like the way they go i do kind of like the idea of it it's just how it's going to be implemented we'll just have to wait and see that's the one of those things um yeah so i think another nba change as well is that um the nba they're focusing on they were they actually wanted to get rid of conferences and i've heard this talk for a long while now and i think i can speak on behalf of a lot of people that getting rid of conferences is isn't what i don't think anybody wants to see that because the reason why i say this is because the teams also have teams are also in their own division so of course you've got the southwest the southeast 
um you've got north you've got um you know northwest you've got you've got different conferences right you've got different conferences and different divisions and i think that makes it more interesting because if certain teams don't let's say win a win the eastern conference or western conference title they have a division title they can uh fall upon after that you know i think that that makes more sense and you know getting rid of conferences especially with like 30 teams yeah 30 teams it's just a bit well it's gonna make it's gonna make it a bit more clustered in my sort of eyes so i think in that sort of sense if they're gonna do that they have to kind of really restructure how they're gonna do it and how it's gonna work for everybody remember there's 82 games as well so what are you exactly gonna cut are you gonna cut because when you think about it if you're if you're in the same conference you play each other at least like three times if you're in the same division four times different conferences you play each other twice so you've got to look at it from that that aspect as well and you know like when you look at other sports like the nfl the mlb and you know when you look at those sports even the nhl as nhl as well when you look at those sports they will have conferences they will have divisions so it makes more sense to just keep it the same structure the way it is you know i think everybody enjoys it the way it is and i think the nba right now you know these these changes i feel like these changes could have been done beforehand rather than kind of talking about it now some of them not all of them but just some of them you know because even going back to because even going back to the to the games of the a2 game season i think it's just gonna yeah like i said it's just gonna affect it's just gonna affect the rookies and the new guys of the nba to not be to not want to get certain stats they, they won't be able to achieve certain stats because you know guys who are on the scoring list assist list and the rebound list and whatever stat list whatever how many stats list there are you know all those veterans all those all those hall of famers all those retired players they worked hard and long during those seasons to get those stats throughout the years so taking that away and not letting the new generation get it it's going to be kind of like well what's the point of doing certain things if we can't you know be a hall of famer this way i mean i guess you know whatever stats they end up with it'll be still be impressive but it just won't be it won't have the same impact like i'm sure a lot of players now they want to get thirty thousand points or twenty thousand points even or five thousand assists ten thousand assists that sort of thing like it's just i think like it's just slowing down stat averages and you know and i'm not saying you know people should all oh, consistently focus on stat averages and patch of stats but what i'm saying is that it just makes it kind of like well well i mean we do this thing for stats also as well so what what so why where do we stand where do we stand with this game game you know it just doesn't make sense i wouldn't be surprised if the nba start talking about um you know shortening the minutes of each quarter because i could see that honestly see that happening you know in europe it's already 10 but in the US is 12. So I could see them going down by 10 as well. But then again, I don't think it would matter too much if it is 10 for the US anyway. So, yeah. But, um, you know, those are the few changes in the NBA right now. They they are still talking about it. It's all in the works. Um, nothing is official yet. So just um, hold on to that. Just keep updated. And I'll try and keep you guys updated as much as I can about that news as well. So, yeah. <clears throat> But other than that, I think that is pretty much it. That's all I wanted to discuss, really. Just a few things here. Just this is a little short podcast, but I'm hoping the next two podcasts before the end of the year will be a little bit longer for you guys. And um, also drop a comment below. Um, also talk to me on, on Twitter and Instagram. Just talk to me about any topics that you want me to go over in the NBA right now or any players, for example. And yeah, and of course I'll talk about it on the podcast as well. And I'm sure how um, you'll love to hear other guests as well talk about this as well. So we have it'll make the podcast and topics more interesting to talk about. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and comment down below. And I'll see you for the next podcast. Peace.